we'll do the press conference every uh, just like every other time. You guys ask a question, <laughs> microphone will be ran around, and uh, announce your name, out, outlet, and <clears throat> Scott will answer. We'll go with uh, Karen and kick it off. Karen Krauss, New York Times. Scott, how do you go from 37th in this event four years ago to first? Um, I, I really don't know. Uh, I think it's a, a lot of great coaching. Um, I think it's something I really wanted. Um, when I graduated, I took about eight months off and I just kind of had an itch, I guess you could say, and I, I really wanted it. And I figured if I'm gonna put myself in debt trying to afford to keep swimming, I might as well you know, give it my best. So um, I think it's just hard work, um, surrounding yourself with people who believe in you. Um, and I guess having a great coach really helps. Dan? Hi, uh, Dan Albano, Orange County Register. Since we don't have your bio in the media guide, and you just mentioned your coach, um, can you tell us about your coaching and your training? Who, um, your, who, yeah. who your coach is and your training? Um, let's see, my coach is uh, Peter Motokaitis. Um, he's been my coach. I went to UC Davis. Um, my first couple of years, I was more of a distance swimmer, so I didn't swim with him. Um, I swam with uh, Rick Henderson. Uh, but toward my junior year, I kind of transferred over to shorter things. Um, and start focusing on breaststroke a little more. Um, you know, Pete always, you know, as a as our, our team was cut, um, UC Davis lost its men's swim team. Um, so he transferred over and became the assistant coach for the women. Um, and after I graduated, you know, I came, I went back to him. I know he had uh, he helped put Haley Cope on the 2004 Olympic team. Um, and I he asked me if I was really serious about it because he didn't really want to you know mess around. Because um, you know he puts a lot into it, um, I owe him you know a lot for that. But we sat down, we had a plan um, from day one. He said, "Yeah, we're going to do this." We uh, started doing a lot of things differently. Um, sometimes I joke and then say, "If you would have trained our whole team like this, we would have been way better." <laughs> but uh, we started going on you know different cycles. We were going five days on, one day off instead of following the weekly thing. Uh, you know, pretty hard swim weekends and things, but. Um, also, you know, I train, we don't have a team, so I, it's just me and him in the pool a lot of times. I just kind of train by myself. Sometimes the women's team's there, but, you know, they're doing their own thing. Um, so he's really the only one there to push me, and he always give me words of encouragement. Um, and basically, he has a plan, and we stick to it. Um, so, and, uh, any more? Do you have any other questions about that? Let's go with Karen again, and then Scott. How many times have you been told that if you really want to take it seriously, you need to go to a program where you can train with other men? And can you just talk about the um, what you've gained from having this, what some would say is a non-conventional training? Yeah, um, you know, it's true. Uh, Pete was actually the only person who even recruited me um, out of uh, high school. So it was, you know, he obviously, I guess, saw something maybe early on, but... You know, I always, you know, kind of wanted to go to, you know, school like Texas, things like that, uh, Cal, um, Stanford, because, you know, you think you, know, you go to these big schools, you train with these guys. Um, but, you know, when I came back and I knew I'd be training by myself, you know, Pete said, you're going to be mentally tougher than anyone out there because you do this by yourself. Um, also, sometimes I like, you know, doing it for the little guys. Um, UC Davis is a pretty small school. I'm not really known for, you know, swimming. Um, in fact, we just actually, uh, another, I'm, I have a title of volunteer assistant coach for the women's team, but another volunteer coach uh, from our track team, she graduated, she just made the London Olympic team. Um, she's a distance runner, and I, she probably trains a lot. I've seen her in the weight room kind of by herself. She probably does it a lot too. And I think it's just really cool to represent kind of a small team like that. And we found out last night she had made, uh, in the finals, she dropped like, 30 seconds, she's a distance runner, and in the last like 100 yards, I guess she passed like two people by like a couple hundreds of seconds to get third and get her FINA A cut, and her coach emailed Pete and said, you know, never count an Aggie out. Because, um, you know, sometimes I think you have that mentality, you know, you don't, you don't have all this, maybe this big a support or all that, but you kind of have a little chip on your shoulder because you don't have that and you want to you wanna prove something to people. Scott Motice with Athletes in Action. Speaking of just kind of what you commented on there, uh, you said that Herb Brooks is your sports hero. Uh, he definitely was 
the epitome of the little guy in winning. Yes. If Herb was here today, what do you think he would say to you? What advice do you think he'd give you as you head to London? Uh, you know, I don't know. I watch that movie Miracle every time before I go to a swim meet. Uh, my girlfriend gets really annoyed because um, I kind of repeat the lines before he says them. Um, I love that speech he gives. Um, and I, he'd probably say something like that, you know. It, what does he say? You know, if, they, if you played them ten times, they might beat you nine, but, you know, not tonight, not this time. <laughs> So, you know, I think that he, you know, it's, that's what it's about. It's about putting yourself out there. You know, he, uh, my, uh, my old age group swim coach really liked the part where after they won, uh, it shows in the movie, he goes and kind of lets them celebrate. He goes in the uh, a hallway kind of by himself. And, you know, in his little speech at the end says how much he was proud of them for giving up so much of themselves. And, um, you know, things like that. I think you, know, you really do have to give up a lot and having people there who would support you and, and uh, yeah, I'd well, probably say something. Well, I don't know. I'm kind of rambling now. <laughs> Let's go with Bill. And then those three all in a row. Uh, hi, Bill Shaken from the LA Times. Um, number one, are you the first Aggie to make the uh, Olympic team as a men's swimmer? Um, as a men's swimmer, I really don't know. Um, maybe. I, I, I really don't know. All right. Um, we were Division Two until about three years ago, four years ago. So I really don't know. And, and number two, and maybe a little more seriously, I see you got the Aggie wear you're sporting here. Um, yeah. Given that they, they really cut the team and made a statement that men's swimming was something less than a priority, yeah. um, it seems a little incongruous for you to be wearing shirts plugging them. Do you yeah. think there's any inconsistency there? You, you, hey, young ho, let's get them. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you know, people are like, why aren't you like you know mad that they did that? Why do you want to keep supporting them? But I think it means a lot. Uh, you know, I was I was lucky enough I was able to graduate the year they cut it, so I finished out. But you know, a lot of the guys on the team weren't able to. Um, so you know, I think I do it for them in part. Um, I do it just so people remember. I mean, well, I'm still swimming. I'm, we're still around. Uh, Pete's still you know coaching women. So even though you know they they tried to you know get rid of us, but we're a little more difficult to get rid of I think than they thought. Um, so. Scott Mark Hanazaro from the New York Post. As, as good as your story is, can you appreciate uh, what's going on with Jason Lezak here? And I'm sure you're familiar with Ryan scratching and giving him the opportunity to get the final today. And can you just kind of talk about that, you know, going to him? Yeah, you know, I, I was actually watching that race and I was really rooting for him. Um, I think that's really cool. I'm really glad he got to go. Um, I'm actually really glad I get to go on a team with, uh, you know, Brendan Hansen, Eric Shanto. Um, I've watched those guys swimming for a while. Um, you know, really look up to them. Uh, I really enjoyed being in that finals in the breast circle right between them. Uh, my parents said I got all that airtime on TV because of it. But I think it's awesome to have, you know, so many good leaders like that. I mean, you know, when Lezak did that in the relay four years ago, that was, you know, one of the most amazing things I've ever seen happen. And. To have those leaders on the team and these guys that have all the experience, um, I think it's gonna really help me because I have you know zero experience, so I'm you know, definitely have someone to look up to. Um, I'm really honored, I think, to just you know be a part of that. I and mean, these guys are like legends, um, and to like be able to like be associated with them in some way is I think is really cool, and I'm really uh, grateful for that. We'll go Dan and then Karen. We'll wrap it up. Again, congratulations. Is, is there is there something? that goes with the breaststroke with all the moving parts, the timing of the legs, people do the arms different. Is there, because of all the moving parts, does it lend itself more to upsets that particular race where, you know, sometimes you hear about, you know, the, the young 14 year old girl can come up, she's real light, she can go super fast. But there's, there's different things with that race. Do you think uh, it's unique that lends itself to upsets? Uh, I definitely think it's unique. Um, it's funny because I kind of used to be an IMer, but when I came back, it seemed like the most open events were breaststroke. Of course, that was before Brendan Hansen decided to come back. But it is definitely a unique stroke, and uh, sometimes you feel it, sometimes you don't. In the prelims, you know, I felt great. In the semifinals, I felt awful. I tried a lot harder and actually went slower. Um, so, which is kind of why I swam uh, this morning. It was kind of a big risk. I don't know if it was a big risk, but. I swam the 200 IM in prelims. Most people, you know, were like, "Why would you do that? I just want to rest." But it was really important to me to get my stroke back underneath me. You know, it's such a rhythm and timing thing. If you're off, you're off, and you know, you, just little teeny differences can make. Uh, you know, you can feel like 
you can feel terrible at the end of the race, you can feel amazing. Um, so it is definitely a unique stroke. I think I read an article that my coach sent me about how breaststrokers are always the weird people on the team, both physically and I guess, I don't know how we act, I guess we're kind of the outcasts maybe. Um, but I mean, it definitely is a, a different stroke and it lends itself to, maybe you could say upsets, I don't know. Some people say it's, uh, you know, it's the most difficult because it's so weird. Um, so maybe people usually have a lockdown. It might not be as big of an upset. I don't really know. Oh, we're actually going to end it there. Scott, thanks. Okay. We've got Camille Adams coming up and then Greg Choice in the mix zone. So. All right, thanks for uh, sitting here to listen to me, guys. <laughs>